earliest potential bipedal human ancestor of humans are the Australopithecines. There are two key Australopithecine species that should be noted. These are Australopithecus afarensis and Australopithecus africanus. The question is, which one of these two do we descend from? The answer to that question is Australopithecus afarensis. Australopithecus afarensis has a longer femur than Australopithecus africanus. It should have been able to walk longer distances for a prolonged period of time. Postcranially, its morphology is similar to modern humans than to apes and suggests a lifestyle strongly adapted to long distance walking. However, its brain size is more comparable to other primates. A famous fossil of Australopithecus afarensis is Lucy. You could see on the left-hand side of the slide a picture of Lucy, who's considered our earliest ancestor. Homo habilis, also known as the handyman, is the first species in the genus Homo. Homo habilis evolved around 1.8 million years ago. Morphologically, Homo habilis was similar to Australopithecus afarensis, except it had a slightly larger brain. It is also the first species to use shaped tools, and it is believed to begin to eat meat, whereas Australopithecines were plant eaters. However, Homo habilis did not hunt for its meat, but was more than likely a scavenger, like a vulture, waiting for other animals to finish eating before consuming what was left behind for them to devour. The next greatest evolutionary advancement is Homo erectus. It represents a fundamental turning point in human evolutionary history. Morphologically, Homo erectus is similar to modern humans. Their brain size was 80% larger than Australopithecines and approximately 40% larger than Homo habilis. They were capable of long distance running and may have been the first to use fire and throw objects. Homo heidelbergensis is the first early human species to live in colder climates and are the earliest species to control fire, to build shelters, and make clothes. They also had increased brain sizes compared to Homo erectus. It is believed that both Neanderthals and Homo sapiens developed from Homo heidelbergensis. Neanderthals are the closest extinct human relatives to Homo sapiens. However, their bodies were shorter and more stocky, adapted for colder environments. Their brains were similar in size to ours, and in some cases even larger. There are some researchers who do not consider Neanderthals as a separate species, but a subspecies of archaic humans. This is because there is evidence in our human genome of having Neanderthal DNA. We each have some Neanderthal DNA in us. Neanderthals existed until about 40,000 years ago. Neanderthals used and made stone tools, built hearths, and used various cooking methods. We know they were seafaring and thought to have religious beliefs and capable of speech. Included in the artifacts found associated with Neanderthals was an object that worked as a flute. I'm including a video in this module of the flute and it being reconstructed and played. Notice how complex the sound is from the flute. It is rather interesting and beautiful. It is also believed that Neanderthals had cave paintings. On the left side of the slide, there is a simple cave painting associated with Neanderthals in Spain. And on the right side of the slide, there is a Neanderthal engraving 
found in a cave located in Gibraltar. I'm including in this module two journal articles about these Neanderthal cave paintings for your consideration. It is optional reading, but provides more details about the evidence of this cave art being associated with Neanderthals. Homo naledi is a recently discovered fossil, discovered in 2015. Its morphology suggests its hands were used to climb in trees, but had feet indicative of bipedalism and a terrestrial lifestyle. It is believed that Homo naledi is not a direct ancestor of Homo sapiens, and more than likely an offshoot of the genus Homo that went extinct. Homo naledi shares similar features to Australopithecines, but had a skull shape similar to early Homo sapiens. Fossils for this species date to around 250,000 years ago. Homo denisonova is an extinct species of archaic humans discovered in Siberia. Mitochondrial DNA indicates close affinities with Neanderthals. However, they had larger molars similar to middle Pleistocene to late Pleistocene archaic humans. DNA studies have shown that Denisonovans may have interbreeded with modern humans in New Guinea. Malaysians and Aboriginal Australians have about 3 to 5% of Denisonovan DNA. Take note of the picture of the Denisonova bracelet on the bottom left of the slide. It is dated to about 65,000 to 70,000 years ago. It is beautifully crafted and shows refined techniques and detail. Another species of the genus Homo discovered in 2003 is Homo floresiensis. It is only found on the island of Flores, Indonesia. This species is sometimes referred to as the hobbit because it stands only 3 feet 6 inches tall. The evolution of this species may be due to the insular and isolated nature of its island environment and the limited resources available on the island for it to access. Similarly, other extinct species like the pygmy elephants show similar adaptations. The isolation and insularity of the island, limited food resources, and lack of predators all contributed the way this species evolved. Finally, there is Homo sapiens, us. And we evolved about 300,000 years ago. And out of Africa, we migrated into Asia, into Europe, and throughout North and South America, into Australia, populating almost every environmental niche on the planet. This concludes the module with regard to the history of human evolution, and essentially begins our archaeological look at the prehistory and history of Homo sapiens.